Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we shall be looking at the proof of this property that we studied in the previous video. So here we are talking about P groups. P groups are those groups which have order, which is some power of this prime number, right? Now the, this property tell us that this P group have a non-trivial centers. All the centers, they are non-trivial. So that means they have all uh, other elements uh, in addition to identity element, right? So they are not exactly identical to the identity only. So, uh, so here, uh, if G is given to be some non-trivial finite group, right, whose order is a power of prime, so that means G is given to be a non-trivial prime P group, right, then Z of G, the center of G has more than one element within it. Now, remember what is the definition of center of G? Center of G, Z of G, it contains all those elements X such that those elements commute with so it contains all the elements of the group such that x contain uh, commutes with all the elements of group right so those elements which commute with all the all the other elements of the group are listed under the center of g okay so for the proof we first of all observe that the conjugacy class of a is just that particular element only why uh, whenever we have that particular element taken from the center of g so that means that particular element commutes with all the other elements of the center right so why this is so i i can show you this thing from uh, the reason that is given here we if possible suppose that b is present in the conjugacy class of a whenever a is present in the center of g right so we are assuming this thing if this is possible let b be a member of the conjugate of a then b could be written as x into a into x inverse whenever x is a member of g for some member x in g right according to the definition of conjugacy okay so we uh, can now uh, write this x a as equal to a x y because a is a member of center of uh, g right so therefore it would commute with every element so in particular it would also commute with x so in place of x a we are now writing a x so now you can shift the brackets here according to associativity and you can see x into x inverse what is this thing this becomes the identity which is e so what is a into e it is equal to a only correct so uh, you see we obtain b is equal to a hence there is no uh, no other element except a present in the conjugacy class of a because b was some arbitrary member so therefore the conjugacy class of a would contain only a if and only if we have that that element in the center of the uh, group g correct so using this result over here we can uh, we can now recall our class equation uh, the class equation was uh, written in this manner where we have the order of the group g defined by the summation of the index of uh, this subgroup centralizer of a in g right so here this summation the sum runs over one element a which is taken from each conjugacy class of uh, each conjugacy class of uh, the centralizer of A, right? And we may now, according to this thing, because central uh, the conjugacy class of A contains only the element uh, which is present in the just one element which is present in the center of G. So therefore, from this uh, conjugacy class, from all the conjugacy class, we may separate out those elements which contain only one element. So that one element would definitely be present in that center, right? So that is what we are doing. We are separating out all those elements uh, which are present which are uh, which form the singleton set in the conjugacy class of A. So the number of such elements would be such that uh, the number of elements which are present in the center of G and we represent that by the order of the center of G. So we have the order of center, center of Z plus this remaining summation. Right now this remaining summation is what? It now varies over all such members, all such conjugacy classes which have more than one element because we have extracted the one which has one, only one element and we have listed it as the order of the Zg, correct? So 
we have this equation and in fact this equation which is the modified version of the cl uh, class equation this is also known as second class equation right some in some text it is also mentioned as second class equation okay the second form of class equation so now because we know by the lagrange's theorem we have the number of uh, left cosets which are produced by some coset that order the order of that is given by uh, the order of g divided by the order of the centralizer of a so basically the order of the subgroup right and here the centralizer of a is the subgroup of g correct so here so because we know g is a p group right g is a p group so that means for g it would have the order which is p to the power something let's call that to be m so we have the order of g as some p to the power m so if we have the here as p to the power m and this thing is dividing this thing so that means this is also has to this also has to be some prime power because only then we can have this division so uh, this implies that conjugacy class also has the for, has the order which is of this form p raised to power k where k is greater than equal to 1 and if con if that is so uh, after division also we would have something which is prime raised to power something so therefore each term within this expression within the summation is of this form p raised to power k where k is some prime number correct so in accord uh, in accordance with that we have our equation here thus from the class equation we can see because we had this thing over here from the second class equation we can uh, take this term to the left hand side so that we have the order of g minus summation the uh, order of uh, this index a of uh, ca in g right this is equal to the order of the center of g right not we can we do not move this term but this term to the left hand side okay so therefore now you see this is some prime to the power m uh, right and what is this this is some prime to the power k and we are subtracting it so therefore this also has to be prime to the power something because each term on the left hand side is divisible by p so therefore the right hand side should also be divisible by p so that means the order of this z, z of g the center of g should also be divisible by p if it is divisible by p p is some prime number and prime starts from 2 2 3 5 7 and so on so therefore the order should at least be 2 so therefore the order is exactly not equal to 1 and hence the subgroup the uh, center of g has to be non-trivial why because in this case it has at least two elements so it is not exactly equal to this identity here so i hope you understood the proof of this property here well that is it for this video thank you for watching